subsidizes food. Some of the food is subsidized at 100%. Now imagine, we dream about another possibility for ourselves, for our community, and for our country. But there are some countries that do more than dream. We have the possibility to have a Congress and a president and legislatures and governors that care about us. We have the possibility. But you know what? If you do the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same, same results. results. And sometimes it means then that we are going to have to move outside of our comfort zone. We're going to have to believe and then act on our beliefs a little bit differently. If we want a governor who respects us, then we can't just give our votes away. We can't give our volunteer away. And we have to tell those candidates from both of those main special interest parties that if you don't come by us, you will go nowhere fast. <laughs> now this is possible to do. Because when I was in Georgia, I tried my best to do it. In fact, my father would come up with an idea and he'd pass the idea around at the dinner table at home. And then I, I you know, I'd have to do it because that's what children do. They do whatever their parents tell them to do. And sometimes your parents don't even tell you, they just make the suggestion, and it's a gentle push in that direction. Well, my dad had this idea that we needed a black manifesto for the state of Georgia. Because you see, Georgia is approximately 40% black. Wow. And yet the black voters in Georgia get no respect. Georgia has the largest legislative black caucus in the entire United States, wow. and they get nothing. Wow. And so my father, fed up and tired right, of sellout politics, okay. said we need to have an agenda. Okay. So I set about the task so of coming up with a black manifesto for the state. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I went to all of the black members of the highest ranking officers in the various departments of the state and said, if you had your druthers, what would you do? Or what would you be able to do? That across all of the departments of the state government became the manifesto. And then what my father decided was that we need to operationalize this manifesto by getting the civil rights community to buy in to this becoming the agenda for black Georgia in the governor's race. The civil rights community said, yes, this is a wonderful idea. And so then we went to the universities and we got the universities to put the, um, the manifesto into a scorecard. And we gave it to our two candidates for governor. Andy Young had run in the Democratic primary. He had lost, and people were upset. And so we said, OK, we will do this so that the black vote will not be discounted. The Democratic nominee, who at that time was Zig Zag Zell Miller, you know him, became the first Democrat to ever speak at the Republican convention. Uh, that's the kind of Democrats we have in Georgia. <laughs> Zig Zag Zell Miller refused to even participate. And the Republican, following the silk stocking crowd, actually participated and scored rather well. So then came the test. And the test was for all of those people in the civil rights community 
And all of those black elected officials in the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, who all were Democrats, will you put the interests of the community first and support the candidate who supported you, who just happened to be a Republican, or well, the black elected officials chose the or. Mm -hmm. And the effort, all of that effort, in writing this beautiful document, in operationalizing the document, creating the scorecard, all we required was that our black elected officials actually be black. Yeah. <laughs> actually just be black. And represent the people who put you into office. And they were more loyal to the Democratic Party than they were to their own voters. And so the black manifesto, the black political agenda for the state of Georgia all fell by the wayside, and then when I left the Georgia legislature, it never happened again. So, I think the moral of that story, or this entire little talk, is that what we dream is possible. It is possible, because Whoever would have thought, even though I was a candidate for the Green Party in 2008, but whoever would have thought that we would have had a Barack Obama and a Michelle Obama and the two uh, children in the White House? Whoever would have thought that? It was a dream that was thought to be impossible. Even Tupac in his song said, we ain't ready for a black president. <laughs> well, it depends, I guess, on how you define black. <laughs> around the world who set an example from which we can learn. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying for one moment that Libya is perfect. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is that we can be a whole lot better than we are. And the people of this country deserve a better president than we have in terms of policy. We deserve better policy coming out of the White House and out of the Congress and out of the various legislatures that we have. I hope that I have given you an inkling of what I saw when I was there in Libya and why it's important for you to do what you do every day on the front lines for POP because we can do better, we must do better, but we gotta change a little thing about the way we act and the way we uh, vote and the people that we support for office, we got to change a little bit so that we can get better. So thank you. Very much.